What's up guys, it's XYZ from Overwatch Craft. I'm going to be doing a gameplay analysis VOD review of an Ana player from our community. Um, so, I'm not a really good Ana player, but I'm just going to hop right into it. Um, I'm a support main, so it should translate a little bit over into uh, Ana play, at least enough to make this VOD uh, decent. So, our coaching that we provide is actually free. Uh, I'm going to link the Discord below where you can submit and request your uh, VODs and just leave your VODs, and one of our coaches can review them for you. Blue tanks are way up. Actually, let's look at what happened there. So, I think what happened there was probably should have played in a safer position. Um, it's hard to actually say that if you have it line of sight of Hog, but maybe being in a position because you're trying to heal Lucio, trying to heal whoever's up there. Yeah, it's it's hard to actually know that hog was there, so there's no fault on that. Um, let's see what it does here. Okay, so I will comment. I think an Ana or just a support in general should never be like frontline uh, type of thing on the cart where, especially if they have a Roadhog or some sort, so you don't have a really good tank line. Um, it's lucky that D.Va was able to defense Matrix, whatever damage was coming out from them, but that always isn't going to be the case. Um, and. Uh, Basically, in a situation like that, he could have been punished uh, really easily if there was um, better players. Because um, if the players on the enemy team were like GM, let's say, like, he would have been punished a lot easier for playing so up front. Uh, like, here's actually a prime example of that. Like. Since he was playing on cart, when he could have probably positioned back here, like back here, if he actually positioned back here, he wouldn't have been caught by that graph per se, as well as the barrage raining down on him. But since he was on the cart as, you know, one of the only healers alive, man, they unleashed on him. They used graviton and they used barrage right away, and he was caught out because he was in front. So it's, uh, wasn't, uh, smartest thing so in, in general like tips for positioning on Ana is to not be frontline where enemies can reach you easily you want to be farther back where enemies aren't line of sight and it's funny because uh, this video actually pointed to one of Gail's videos and um, I, I actually compared the videos because I'm not a really good Ana player so I was getting um, context or whatever and it's interesting, like how higher higher elo players play Ana, like the top, like Ana, Gale's known as the best Ana in the world. But he plays in a way where he's constantly out of line of sight, and you you want to play like most supports the same way because the uh, you're a high priority target as Ana, so people are always going to try to focus you, etc. So. Uh, staying out of line of sight and basically yeah. where the enemies can't see you is is something you really need to be paying attention to um, and trying to do more. Because if you're in a position where you can get ulted or killed, uh, sometimes a little little position mistake like that, like one death, sometimes can change the whole course of a fight. Uh, sometimes the ults are blown out, sometimes it happens like that. I mean, right there in that specific case where Ana got gra gravitoned and then barraged, I mean, that's just kind of like 
Well, okay, they used two ultimates. We're gonna have an ult advantage next push, so it's not necessarily all bad, but definitely be looking to position farther away since Ana doesn't have to be close up to be able to be efficient since she's a sniper healer. She's one of the only healers like besides Zenyatta that can just effectively just stay really far back and just be of use to the whole team. Like even right there if the players were better or if they had more numbers, they probably could have just killed the Ana easier. But it's interesting seeing her being played like this. Like I said, I'm not a really Ana player myself, but I generally think that uh, being in line of sight or playing her like a brawler like this is not the best way to play her. It's good shots on the Farah. Um, just because you don't want to be in a risk. You don't want to have any risk of uh, being attacked at all, ever. And if you can avoid that, you're going to die less, you're going to be impactful. Because you can still do everything you're doing, like right here playing on the cart, all the way all the way in the back for the most part. Like you probably want to be able to heal that guy. But like, so even right here, it's like, oh man, you're just like way too close. What happens if they just unleash a grab like right on your face? <laughs> so, or like the DPS gets a lucky like shot on you. So it's... Never have to be this close as Ana. Uh, moving on from that rant, uh, we'll just keep seeing what's playing. It's a good sleep. I think that is one benefit to playing like close quarters with Ana is you can get sleeps off easier in some cases, but it's not not always the thing. So they were able to win that with the. Uh, Blade and the uh, Arisa. Alright, I'm staying on point. Just stay within line of sight and I can heal. Restoring your health. Uh, they're definitely gonna have a uh, Zarya health. Winston has no bubble right now. So, since the team knows that they will have Zarya ult, it is very important for. I guess maybe not so much the Lucio, but definitely the Ana to stay far away. What's the super low? Woke up Zarya right away. Yeah, it's bad. There it is. Okay. Whoever did that should be should be shamed. Because that was a really good fucking sleep. <laughs> they used trance too, and back up guys. obviously, you know, knowing the grab was gonna come out, everyone kind of huddled around the Zari and fucked up there. But you, you good? What's the? Everyone just killed him, man. Leave me alone. So let's see what happens next with Grav gone. They're gonna have Fera Barrage for one. Kind of buffering a lot. Um, they already got picked by the McCree got picked. Um, has Nano. Should not be getting close quarters with a Reaper. One shot to his face would be able to kill him. That's a very bad positional mistake. Um, be focusing more on healing up like the Orisa like that. She shouldn't have been dangerously low at all. Um, we got the Genji Blade coming out. Another beautiful sleep on Zarya. That's huge. Um, but see, like, a good Pharah, she would have been able to kill you. Like, a GM Pharah, let's say. Like, two shots to your face on cart. She even, like, yeah, she even does all of that shit and can't kill you. Like, she got DM'd, so she wasn't able to, but... It's, like, too far forward. Um, this is the kind of common thing here. Accuracy is important with shots, but I have a trouble with that too, so I, I feel you. Um, so, APMing like as fast as possible, like keeping everyone topped off, as well as just the accuracy of the shots is very important. It's like one of the biggest things. But also, I, th I think like you'll, you'll see a dramatic improvement in your performance by just 
fixing, like, like playing a little bit more passively with positioning, like just farther back where the enemies can't really see you or, or get to you without having to go through your team. If you get flanked or if someone tries to dive, you just call for help. Um, what do you play, dude? That's honestly why, in Gale's opinion, he's told me, and just a lot of players' opinions, that Ana isn't really good in this meta. Um, I kind of agree with that too, just because she's more susceptible to dive uh, than a Zenyatta, I guess, because a Zenyatta can frag on its own a little bit harder with Ana. But that's that's besides the point. Um, you still want to be playing farther back, just because good DPS are going to be able to fuck you up, like, any day. Um, so it's important to call your position and just stay in a safe place. Um, the shield. So they're playing a then fall back. Arisa strat on overtime. They already got hit. Those guys shouldn't be playing up there. They need to be playing up here where all these are. Yeah, we should fall back. Fall back. They're also spending way too much time not falling back. Obviously, it's not uh, Chris's fault here. Wow, you had to jinx it, huh? Yep. So, something that could have been done to avoid getting killed there, and probably that that probably costed uh, the team first point. Um, let me see if I can actually pull up a static so I can show positions on um, the trivial altar. This is just, I want to get this by textbook. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to pull open this. So, the team, his team was holding right here. There was a widow right here, and then a bunch of people right here, firing this way, firing this way, and then some firing that way. So as Ana, you should be not in line of sight. This is what I mean. If if you're here, you're susceptible to dying up here. Even as Mercy, you want to be like hiding here and healing, or playing in server room and having your team hold in server room. But, oops, I cleared the image. Um, hold on. Gibraltar. So, like a general good place, place I see most, like the majority of Ana's, at least in my elo, they hold up here. And the reason being, and even if you, if you don't have access to getting the high ground quickly, um, which you should always be looking to do, or at least having soldier go with you, if you can't get up here, you hold right here, um, just so you're out of line of sight. Just simple stuff like that. You can still heal, heal most of your team. You don't want to you don't necessarily want to be like playing right here. Um, let's see what I mean. Here's the widow shot. Diver, diver. Ah, uh, my fly is down. She did she say her fly is down? Obviously the diva ability. But that's hyper low. Anyways, so that. That positioning, positioning too close up there with Ana, it literally costed him that whole point, and that's not necessarily like his fault completely, but at the same time, it could that death could have been avoided and changed the course of the game. Back up a bit. What? No. There's the sights, once he's gonna die, he has to, oh, the wall came out, Back and then the anti, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Wait, we should try, yeah, no, we should try to crush them. Trying to heal him up, like, faster is, is gonna be good, too, but that was just kind of bad luck. Zarya, Zarya, Zarya. Too close to the cards, Zarya, Zarya might have grav, so, beautiful sleep, beautiful sleep. Good day, Anna, Anna, Anna. That's a good play what from Arissa and just overall. Damage buff, baby. Oh, you guys have a long ways to go. Yeah, they're they want Macri now. So it's a very long hold. In any hold like this for like five minutes and one point. You basically have to manage ults, and also no one can get picked, so you have to play almost perfectly. The biggest thing here is, well, you're already in line of sight of rain of May, but 
before I see what happens here, I just want to comment. The, the biggest thing like to take care of when there's four minutes left is make sure you have a timer on, on the enemy Graviton, enemy May ult, and whatever ultimate they have, you want to keep tabs on. Um, and I believe they haven't used any of those ultis since first point, since the beginning of this round. So it's very important to keep that in mind. There's the male. Yeah, I predicted this shit, but <laughs> there's the male. There's the hoggle. There's the animal. They're going to brute force just to take this. Had a counter with Lucio. Able to get out. I don't even know what happened to male, but it seemed to not be effective, so she whiffed it. Keeping Winston up there is very important. Um, Anti is good. Creep behind. I don't know. But see, like, May shouldn't be allowed to even get get close to you. If you're farther back, what happened? I don't know what? I don't know if the damage up, but it, I just feel like we're not enough damage. At that point, I don't think it mattered anyway. Anyone else wants to take? I'll play Reaper. But uh, you guys did have some old stuff. Oh. Could have been winnable. Right now they're snowballing. They used all of their ultis at the beginning and they're just getting kills uh, right away. At this point you could have suicided. Would have been better. But yeah, they're basically snowballing and they're gonna have all of their ults back that they already used. People on your team are changing, so it's a bad situation. And that's all from like just one mistake at the beginning. Like, it's hard to think like that's what caused it, but it's it's like one or two mistakes, and it's just having to react to enemy oh, ultimates. So we'll just kind of see like how the rest of it. Yeah, there's the nano again. There's the grab that didn't come out. High noon. It's just snowball. It's like classic textbook snowball. There's not much that can be done. You have Winston ult. You can stall. I would say probably call for that Winston uh, nano a lot earlier. I think maybe the uh, nano is being held on too long. Contest, contest, contest. Oh wait, oh uh, wait, we'll block. Because, okay, so that's round. Yeah, that but see, the way... The way you want to stop from being snowballed if a mistake like that is made early on is make sure you, you're using ults to combat their pushes, to coordinate their pushes, and then your DPS and just overall players have to perform to be able to stop their ults and not get picked off. Not not get picked off is the key thing here. So if that happens, then they just keep building ults and have the advantage. Still a winnable game though. Okay, someone wanna jump up with me? Yeah. It's too forward. I can probably get flanked. Uh, I am sad. He just got nuked. They have a Discord, so. Just press the cart. There's a Yada Discord. Yeah, Annie jumped in alone. Chris raised a very good point there. I did. Alright, alright, chill, bro. I got. Another good sleep. Of all these good sleeps, and then just like the pea shooters waking them up for no punish. Like, their team is not punishing their mistakes. He's way too close right now to the enemy. He shouldn't be this close with 18 seconds. Good nano on Reaper. Ended up working decently. But if Azaria, honestly, if she was any decent. At like hitting her shot, she missed like her whole clip of a hundred with full energy on you. <laughs> so, just positioning close is like the general theme of this uh, this match here. And again, I'm not an Ana player. Like, I don't know if that's how you're supposed to be playing. But honestly, like as a sniper, you don't have to play. It's the same thing with like any character. If if you can do what you're doing as the character farther away, then it's. It's better to do it farther away. Um, you guys have a pretty good snowball going on. Uh, gonna have to watch out for Tac Visor with Nano. That's yeah, coming up next. 
she died as well as the grav grav hog as well so there's a, there's a lot of ulties yeah. coming from them the way your team will have to play this is not getting picked question mark and also making sure that you can counteract your ults with your ults they're gonna beat this is too dangerously close for the grav standing right in range of it Stay Ooh, on. your sleeps are so on point. It's like you hit every single one of them. Uh, yeah, I mean that's. No, I wasn't. My bad. That's okay. We got pretty far anyway. Fair got picked with ulti and. Uh... That was pretty decent for a minute nine. Yeah. Standing too close. Just a dive Let's see this somewhere. last defense. We should definitely drop down to contest the cart sooner. Oh no. I agree. Since we basically have two shields. They'll we probably take Widow again, so be very careful. Stop the payload. <laughs> yeah, they have Widow again. Brian, back up a little bit. Reaper, right side, Reaper, right side. It's a good call out. Oh, oh shit, I thought These guys are playing way too yeah, aggro down, out of line of sight. Already down uh, one, down yeah, two. Just back up, back up. Oh no. What the heck? So right there, like, kind of turning... Turning around. We'll play this again. Back up, back up. So seeing Farah being shot, dropping down in this fashion is not always the best, but I guess it was, like, the option available. He has nade. Should use nade on the, the Ryan, I think, in my opinion. Mine got nuked what because of Hog Discord and the Widow, I think. I don't know what else shot him. Probably just the Zenyatta 5 shot. Just back out, Anna. But I think APM could have been more efficiently done uh, there. Then again, I think there should have been more so of a group up. Wow, beautiful nade. Somebody go, somebody go. Obviously. Back up. I got Widow's top left. What the fuck is Ryan doing? Yo, Ace Ryan cannot happen. It's another sleep. What Jesus would you Christ. suggest then? Winston. Alright. What do you suggest? Not play like a pussy, Kappa. <laughs> oh, um, it's toxic. <laughs> yeah, I think APMing is very important. I also sorry, think sorry, sorry. if. Maybe you vocally made the call, if Chris vocally made the call to for the team to rotate faster, maybe they would have listened to their healer. But what happened there that costed them that match, or costed them first point, I don't know if they would have, was everyone died one at a time. Everyone was out of the healer's line of sight. So that's the job of the healer to be in a better line of sight, and also the team to kind of group up and coordinate. And it just led to a snowball from there. But it's crazy because they even in their mind were like, we gotta drop down, we have shields, we gotta play we gotta play the tunnel. And no one did that. They just kind of fed. So uh I don't know. Maybe maybe the Ana could have played down below and helped the team from there, but it probably wouldn't have made too much of a difference, but it's definitely something to look at. General themes of this VOD are just to Play safer, have better positioning, be in a position where you're out of line of sight. Um, hold on, though. I'm actually going to see if I can pull up something for reference to. And I'm talking about the Gale VOD. The same exact map. Yeah, here it is. So I'm just going to pull open this for comparison to positioning. To top 10 on an Xbox? Hey, nice man. Good job. 
All right, and I'm just gonna look through this really quick. Quick. Let me reset my alert box. Looks like it's only a seven minute gameplay, so it already is wow. quick. But I'm just gonna look at his positioning. So here he is in that, that same position, kind of. But let's see how he plays it. They have a lot more flankers at this ELO too, which is crazy. Yeah, see, even, even Gale made a mistake with positioning. And I think that's just because his team's more confident. But <laughs> he shouldn't have been trying to aggro there. He would have been safer uh, not doing that. Let me actually look like later in the video. Because that's probably where he gets a little bit more serious. And I actually want to see his position as I want to play myself. We're gonna go for cart. I'm gonna uh, anti them on top. So he's kind of out of line of sight. Yeah, we're outside. Blue. He has his tank line right here, so he's safe from any threat from top. He knows there's gonna be no threat from top that these guys aren't gonna deal with. And if there is, if there is a threat, he can just back up that way. And he also plans to ambush them from here and have their tank line jump at him. Sorry, that was a mess. So let's see how it goes. Like, he's, he's playing so smart here because he can keep line of sight with most of the team, drops down to Ryan to help, but he's also, like, just kind of away from the fight in general, like, most of the time. So I'll just look at offense as well. Hey, switch plates. That's my friend. Um, I don't mean to like be taking away from the original VOD, but I just want to like compare positioning styles to give something as an example. And obviously, I'll leave this link to this VOD in the description for anybody that wants to look at it. And there's definitely better examples of this. This is just one game. I haven't actually watched it. It's huge. The, These guys had a Reinhardt too, so it gives you the option to position better. That's not what I wanted. But anyways, I'll stop it there. Basically, the one thing I want to say on positioning is just make sure with any support or any any kind of play, make sure there is no threat to your character at all. Like, if there is a possibility or percentage of threat, try to make that percentage as low as possible. And this means like as a DPS, right? As a, if you're playing like soldier, you don't go for a one-on-one -on -one situation. The percentage of failure is a lot higher, higher based on if you were to fight as a unit or as a team. You don't dive 1v6 into a monkey. Your percentage of failure is very high. So it's the same thing with positioning as a support. If you're in range of a hook, if you're in range of a shatter, if you're in range of a graviton or an enemy ult, um, Things, things can go wrong. Things can go south real quick. Anyways, I'd like to end that video here. Um, for anybody watching from YouTube, uh, you can check us out at OW Craft. We do coaching and bot analysis, stuff like that. I'll leave those links in the description. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hope this helps any Ana players out there, as well as um, the Ana player that I reviewed for uh, Chris. Hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching, guys.